Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukodowski of WeAreChange.org, and this morning, the top story and the top news article on Reddit was this one with 17,000.4 upvotes, with, of course, the title being Florida Man Spent 41 Days in Jail for Heroin, but it was actually a detergent, <laughs> cop says. And the main photo that they use for this story definitely tells you everything you need to know about it. But in this video, we're going to do what we did in the previous videos, and that is pick a very popular article, read it to you, be extremely hypercritical of it, giving you very specific context that you should know to these bigger stories, as well as sending a very personal message to the author of that particular piece. And today, it's definitely this poor Florida man that spent 41 days in jail. Now, the reason I'm laughing, because if you're not laughing, you would be crying when you absolutely know about the fallacies and abhorrent circumstances that are dealt to human society because of this false war on drugs. Now, continuing on by this article, which is written by the Miami Herald by a Josh Magnus. We're going to talk to you, Josh, in just a little bit. Now, the thumb that the Miami Herald used is definitely perfect for this story and definitely does exemplify what's happening here. And uh, the story goes on, says, quote, for nearly six full weeks, 29-year-old Matt Curl said he sat inside a Florida jail for a crime he didn't commit. The charges was trafficking heroin, according to CBS 12. It came with the steep potential punishment and bond, which frightened Curl, who said an officer mistook laundry detergent for heroin. Now, the story links to a CBS 12 news report, but let's sticking on the main one here. Now, there's definitely going to be some bigger takeaways from this article at the end of this video, but continuing on, quote, in the past when I've gone to jail, it's been something where I know I wasn't going to be there forever, Cruel said. According to WPTV, it's a lot different than going to jail and the charges of trafficking of heroin carries a penalty of 25 years in prison. Now, on Automatically here, you understand that Matt is a repeat offender here, has been previously in jail, which of course will affect how you see and judge this man, which also most likely the police officers in this case also did. But in the land of the free, we should understand that we have a jail population of 2.2 million people currently behind bars today in the United States. And according to Fareed Zakaria, there are more Americans in jail than there were in Stalin's gulag. It's important to also understand that according to some legal experts, the average American commits three felonies a day with of course most people not even realizing that they have committed a crime now for me this is just some important context to share with you now the bond here was set at a half a million dollars most likely because of the prior criminal activity of matt here and in my own personal opinion the bail bond system in the united states is extremely corrupt and also very unethical moving forward with the story Kroll was arrested by Martin County Sheriff's Deputy Stephen O'Leary. And you, and you know, you know, if you're ever getting pulled over by a sheriff's deputy that is named Stephen O'Leary, you're, you're in trouble. No matter if you're, if you're uh, moving forward on December 5th. According to WPTV, Sheriff William Snyder says the officer had been fired after an investigation uncovered that at least 11 people he put in jail for drug charges were found innocent, the TV station reported. 11 people, 11 people had their lives uprooted, ruined with major consequences and fears looming on them because of this officer falsifying drug evidence in order to get convictions and put people behind bars. And let's just be honest here, this man doesn't deserve to be fired. This man deserves to actually go to jail for ruining the lives of 11 people because the people trusted him as a public service officer, as a police officer, to do his job correctly, which he was knowingly falsifying to most likely probably get a promotion or for other sick idiotic motives that this quote peace officer was incentivized to do 
Moving on with the story, no matter what we do, no matter how hard we try, just based on the law of possibilities, there's always a possibility that one bad apple will slip through, Snyder said, according to WPTV. I laugh at that, because that's, come on, that's not an argument to be made here. Now, of course, duh, not all police officers are bad. But I think with the prison population and the fact that when you do get pulled over, you're definitely not feeling protected and served, especially if you're in a vehicle. I think America needs to admit here that there is a problem, especially with the huge responsibilities that they have in this country. I think, I think that's a fact here that this is a bigger problem than just one officer since a lot of these things happen often. And there definitely deserves to be a bigger, broader conversation, which I think begins with this officer going to jail for his obvious crimes and misservice to the public. Continuing on, according to WPTV, the TV station reported that Kroll may sue for damages. Yeah, he better sue. He probably will sue. Look at his face. He will sue. He's, he's going to be, he's most likely going to be fine. Kroll was sleeping inside his van in a parking lot. Interesting detail to add here. Uh, before the arrest, according to CBS 12, officers got word of a suspicious van and went to check it out. That's when police say O'Leary found a bag of Tied laundry detergent and claimed a field test proved it was heroin, CBS 12 reported. He showed me a picture of the field test kit that he supposedly conducted on his phone. On his phone? I don't even know if that's possible here. Kroll told CBS 12 he never actually showed me the real test kit, but Kroll said he was confused how a drug was found in his car in the first place. Quote, I just looked at him baffled and confused, he told WPTV, because I had no idea as to where 92 grams of heroin came from inside my van. Snyder said that they couldn't find anything credible with what O'Leary stated and freed the 11 people, including Cruel, who had been accused of possessing drugs. Now, Cruel has a message for the officer whose arrest stole weeks of his life away. Quote, I'm not saying he ruined my life, Kroll told, <laughs> interesting, interesting write-up here uh, by this author, quote, but he definitely caused me a lot of emotional distress and a lot of stress to my family. Emotional distress. This guy's definitely talking to a lawyer here. And the next follow-up story by the Miami Herald here, which shows you that this is not just one bad apple that this author tried to <laughs> highlight it in this very specific piece, a comment from, of course, the, the police. But the next story suggested to you is a Richard Jones who, quote, is speaking in this video about his experience after being exonerated on aggravated robbery charges nearly 17 years after being arrested. An innocent man, 17 years. Oh, and, and again, uh, this is more common than you think. I'm, I'm reading on the Channel 12 news story about this, and this poor guy is devastated. He missed big events like Christmas because of this falsified arrest. Now, an important aspect that's totally missed from, of course, this just copy and paste job by Josh Magnus here is the fact that there's also additional cases pending that are being investigated right now where around a 120 drug samples are being tested again 120 other drug samples which potentially means almost 120 other individuals potentially of course less as well that could have been falsely arrested and their arrests are being put into question right now what the hell was this officer thinking I mean, yeah, this story definitely deserves to be in the national spotlight here because it covers a very important thing. And I think the biggest story here is that other than being fired, there's no accountability for this officer and the horrible things that he did. Now, again, this is common also very much with cat litter. A lot of times cat litter tests positive for methamphetamines. And there's countless of articles here when you just type in cat litter, it gets you jail time. Like, of course, this bust of the year where a man spent three days in jail because of cat litter. And the mugshot says it all. Yes, lawsuits. Lawsuits, of course, which has people that were victimized by the police suing the police department and the city getting tax revenue from them. Again, very little accountability here by the people who actually do break the law who are responsible for allegedly 
upholding it. Really, it's just extortion, but that's a whole nother argument. And of course, also drug traffickers are hip to this, and they actually are stashing crystal meth in kitty litter, like this man who was eventually caught and was actually given two life sentences for trafficking meth. Now, the bigger argument that I kind of wanted to leave you guys here with is that these two cases, one of them a false arrest for heroin, another one for meth, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for bigger problems in society that the mainstream media never dares to touch. And that, of course, is the big pharma, police, and prison industrial complexes that have a lot of influences on the laws here in America. Because virtually, there's big pharma medicines out there, not just Oxycontin, but a number of other ones that pretty much do the same thing as meth and heroin, but they're deemed as opioids and painkillers. And we have previously documented on this very specific YouTube channel, even traveling down to Mexico to, of course, medical clinics that are actually treating a lot of people. Again, guys, this is more common than you think. We're not just talking about just drug addicts, just people who are horrible, neglectful, irresponsible people that society likes to make you think that these people are, but these are average human beings, one of which that we talked to and interviewed who was involved in the car accident and then was prescribed very, very hard, sinister painkillers by, of course, his doctor, which is incentivized by the big top lobbyist to do so, basically hooking him on to what was virtually legalized heroin. And because the doctor then took him off of those medicines with that dependency, with that addiction, with how strong these drugs were that were given to him, Naturally, a lot of people, like the person we interviewed, go to other alternatives to keep maintaining what they deem normal, what they were accustomed to that was appropriate by the establishment that told them, yes, these pills are fine, and many times we see the rise of meth and heroin on the streets of the United States, mainly because of this bigger social political issue that is legalized that there's big money in and of course the politicians and the police officers and everyone else just turns a blind eye to and that to me if we're talking about this particular story this to me is the important context that you need to understand behind it if you agree share this video and yeah let's send up let's send a message to josh here follow him uh, eh. okay let's let's write him a message hey just read your article it was okay lots of copying and pasting but f factual and correct would have loved to hear about how big pharma and corrupt government created this horrible situation but hey you're not burger king cheers face with monocle emoji Sense. So yeah, also the CIA imports a lot of the drugs. All right, I gotta go guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate you guys supporting, donating. Oh yeah, I forgot. We're, we're supported by you, you people donating to us. So if you want to see more of this work, don't forget to subscribe and support us on wearechange.org forward slash donate. Love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more here on youtube.com forward slash we are change.